You can be seated in the presence of God and you can just welcome your neighbor and say, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Make sure your neighbor is smiling. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Anybody from the back can remind me of the theme of the month. Do you hear that? We not say it. <laughs> Mommy, why are you smiling? At? <laughs> what is the theme for our month? Praise God. Praise God. What is the theme? Okay, maybe I should come to this side. The theme for the month. I don't want the people on the front to praise God. You know, when the theme for the month is set and the scripture for the anchor scripture for the month is set, you know, there's a responsibility on your part to go back and search what will God say to me as concerning the scripture so that you can personalize it. Praise God. You think the pastor just like to declare the month is the month of victory. The month is the month of praise God. That is why I don't have you pastor because I don't know when they declare all these things after much passing down prayer. And we, if we cannot even remember the theme, how can we remember the content? Praise God. Okay, how many persons have gone back to watch the, to listen to the YouTube video of all the messages that have been uploaded? If you have by mistake listened to one or two. Praise God. Yes, it is good. You know, we have, we can say we are busy, but while you are working, you can just have your earpiece on and listen to those messages. The scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. When they are preached, okay, probably you are distracted or there are things you did not write, you did not note. You go back and listen and listen and listen and listen. That is where your heart will be transformed. That is where you will be changed. Praise God. The book of John chapter what is our anchor. Praise God. Okay, so if you know it, just open. Don't let me see it. So if you do not open it, let us know that you don't know it. John chapter 13. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Now I'm looking for John. John chapter 13. I want to read from the very first verse. And I will read maybe to verse 13 or 14 and stop. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that the hour was come that he should depart out of the world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Mark that word. That even though he loved them from the beginning, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things unto his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rised up from the supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and gathered himself. And after that, he has poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the toe west, wherewith he was guided. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needed not save to wash his feet, but is clean every way. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he. And ye are not all clean. So after he has washed their feet, and had taken his garment, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Where? For so I am. If I then be your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done unto you. Praise God. The scripture says that Jesus, when it was about time for him to depart, that the devil entered into the heart of Judas. Tell your neighbor, may devil not enter into your mind. Ah, you are not saying it. The fact that somebody is sitting in the church does not mean that the devil cannot enter. Do you know that the greatest critics of the church now are believers? Praise God. How many persons have noticed it? That the greatest critics that the church have now are not unbelievers. They are what? They are believers. The scripture says that the devil entered into Judas. And another, I don't know, one of the other uh, disciples that reported, he said, Jesus told him, Hasting to do that which the devil has put into your heart to do. Praise God. May the devil not use us to fulfill prophecy. In the name of Jesus. And after Jesus has washed their feet, he said unto them, he said, What I have done unto you now is an example of how 
you should leave there after when I'm no longer with you. You know, last year I was, I think towards the end of last year when I was rounding up my thesis, I was spiritually down. Like, that was about the lowest point in my life, spiritually. And I couldn't really figure out what was wrong. I was trying to seek God's face and I was asking so many questions within me. So many things were troubling my mind and there were not even things I could even actually share with anybody. But then I met uh, a brother and we were discussing. And while we were discussing, he shared something with me about the, uh, one another, the topic one another. And we were discussing. And immediately he dropped the phone. We discussed on phone for like three hours and we were sharing the scriptures. He was sharing the scriptures. And after he dropped the phone, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And he started exposing some things about me to me. So I got scared. I said, is this really me? Praise God. And so today I will be speaking about the principle of one another. Praise God. You know, our topic is love, the way to victory. Praise God. Now, it is based on the principle of one another. For the whole of the New Testament, they live on the principle of one another. Jesus started it. If you see everywhere Jesus was talking to the disciples, he would talk about one another. Whenever the apostles had to talk, especially Apostle Paul, he would talk about one another. What does the principle of one another mean in the kingdom of God? Praise God. Let us read uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I will read from verse 1 to 5. Don't mind that I'm reading so many scriptures. It's an opportunity for those of us that don't read Bible to also read. Praise God. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. If you are there, say amen. Okay. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, teach each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, he said, what I have done unto you, I have done as an example unto you. Now, Apostle Paul now write, write in here, he said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The question should be, what mind was in Christ Jesus? What mind did Christ carry? The foundation that Christ laid for his disciples was how they should live in unity, in one, and called, in one accord, because that was where the victory that Christ has delivered to them will manifest. The anchor verse of this month, verse 35, he said, when you do these things to yourself now, he didn't say when you do it to others outside. He said, outsiders will see and know that you are my disciples. When you love one another, when you watch out for one another, how many of us know that as we are as believers, we are enlisted into the army of God? Praise God. So every principle that operates in the physical army operates in the spiritual army. Praise God. You know that when you go to battle as an army officer, you don't think about yourself alone. You know, you don't want to lose any member because the number gives you advantage. Praise God. So you are watching for your brother. Praise God. You are watching out for everybody, even at the battlefield. Praise God. The principle of one another. The principle of one another speak about the mutuality that exists between the people of God and how God wants his people to live right here on earth. That people will see the examples of how we live together. We are believers related by blood. Whether you believe it or not, we are related by the blood of Jesus. So we are connected. Our spirit is connected. Our soul is connected. What we call church, the original word translated to church means they called out ones, the selected one. We are called out. We are selected by Jesus. That when we come together, we fellowship in the unity of spirit. Praise God. Division is not God's agenda for the church. In short, denomination is not God's agenda for church. Denomination is taken from the word denominator, which means a divisor. You know that is the meaning of denomination. Praise God. That is the origin of division in the body of Christ. 
When people say, I belong to this sect, I belong to that sect, we all belong to Christ. We don't belong to any denomination. No denomination saved us. You will hear some people say, ah, I can't worship in that church. Praise God. When the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name. He didn't say where there is a name written. Praise God. The principle of one another. The first principle. Sorry, let me look at my book. Praise God. Is that as a member of this army, you are not permitted. I'm talking now about what God spoke to me specifically. When I was down. You are not permitted to be critical of other people's faults and mistakes. You are not allowed. Let me explain to you. There are certain things that are strength to us. Okay, let me use myself as an example. You know, when, then when I was down and God began to speak to me, the first thing he said to me, he said there are certain things that you consider as strength, and initially they are strength unto you, but the devil has pushed it to the extreme and has become weakness. And I really did not understand, and I was trying to figure out what is it. And I discovered that I was very, very critical of people's faults and mistakes. I was very, like, very, very critical. The reason being this, I'm a trained banker. Praise God. So, trust does not really exist in my dictionary as, praise God, that is. Who. So, if you approach me on anything, I look at it from every angle. I scrutinize it. And immediately I make my decision. I actually don't give a second. I just lock it. If you score is zero based on my own level of integrity, I score you zero, and that is it. And God was saying, how many times have you made a mistake as human being and have forgiven you? But yet, you are so critical of other people's faults and mistakes. And you judge them based on it. See, in the kingdom, you are not permitted to be critical of other people's faults and mistakes. When God, by the reason of the position or by the reason of the place you are, exposes the mistakes and faults of other people unto you, it is not for you to criticize. It is not for you to add forth to their fault. It is for you to do what? To encourage them in love. So in the basic principle of one another, where we operate in this kingdom, nobody, nobody is permitted to be critical of other people's fault and mistake. We are supposed to do what? Encourage one another in love. That is the principle where we operate. Praise God. You know, Apostle Paul wrote, he said, confess your sins one to another. And I was wondering, if I come to meet you, Brian, can say, do you know I fornicated last week? How will you feel? But that is what the scripture says, that we should confess our sins. I should be able to trust you to the level that I can confess my sins to you. But in the church today, I'm sorry to say, people, don't even, people can't trust people to that level to confess their fault. You just look, immediately the brother takes the microphone and you say, ah, this is the chief sinner. The way he's even singing, he's singing like a sinner. You have judged the person in your heart. Praise God. They brought the woman that was caught in the act to Jesus. The Bible says that she was caught in the very act of adultery. It was not like she was going to do it. She was caught. And according to the law of Moses, the Pharisees have judged her based on the law of Moses. And we know that the law of Moses was given by God. So according to the law of God, they have judged her. She was to be stoned. And they brought her to Jesus. And Jesus, looking at them one by one, he already knew in their heart that they have condemned her. They didn't bring her so that they could find solution to, their, to her case. They didn't bring her so that they could encourage her. They brought her because they have condemned her that she is supposed to be condemned. And Jesus looked at them one by one. He said, okay. He said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Praise God. Whenever you find the fault of your brother, before you criticize, ask yourself, are you without sin? Praise God. We are not permitted. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. James chapter 5, verse 16. Anybody that is in any of those places can read. Or if you can project, then it makes it faster. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Or James chapter 5, from 16 to 19. Yes, sir. Praise God. He said, do what? Comfort yourself and edify. Do you know what it means to edify? Edify one another. Do not discourage anybody. Praise God. You are not permitted to do it. I've, in short, it was when God finished exposing me to me, I was ashamed of myself. And you know something that, one lesson that I learned from that point, number one, is that if you are too critical, about other people's fault and mistakes is a sign that you are not fully broken down. 
when God fully breaks you down and reveals you to you, reveals yourself to you, God exposes you to yourself, and you see how you are before God, you will shut up about other people's matter. You will just mind your business. Praise God. So when you still find it easy to judge other people's mistakes, and you are not following the concept and the principle that in this army where you are enlisted, you are supposed to watch other people's back, and you are so critical of other people's opinions and other people's mistakes, is a sign that you are not fully broken down. That is the truth. Praise God. James chapter 5, verse 16 to 19. Anybody that is reading? Yes. It's okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The scripture says that you should confess your fault one to another. And after you have confessed, you should do what? You should discuss. You should pray. That is the principle of the kingdom. You should pray. If I run to my brother and say, sir, I have made this mistake, you should not first look at me and say, me, I can't even do that kind of thing. Praise God. You see? You should not feel, you should, it should not be an opportunity to see yourself as more spiritual than that, than that person. You know, the fault of that of somebody that you have seen does not mean that you are stronger than that person. It's just one area of his life. There might be other areas that is stronger than you. That is why we need each other. The scripture says, iron, sharpened iron. When we come together, you bring your strength, I bring my strength, then we become perfect. We cannot be perfect when we are divided. Praise God. Number two is that you don't set unnecessary standard for people to follow. None of us in this kingdom is the standard. Christ is the standard. Praise God. So if you judge people based on your own standard, you are not following the principle of the kingdom. You know, it was possible for the three disciples that were with Jesus on the month of transfiguration to think that they were more important than all other disciples. Just because Christ took them to the way. And that was exactly what... The mother of John was looking for, when she approached Jesus and said, please, in that your kingdom, create high table for my two sons. Let one be on the right, where one be on the left. Where will the other nine disciples be? They will be at the back, fanning Jesus. Praise God. Because people want to set unnecessary standards. People want to judge other people's Christian life based on their own Christian life. It's not done that way. Praise God. You don't set unnecessary standard for people in the kingdom. Christ is the standard. Let us all look unto Christ. You can pray, God bless you. You can preach the word, God bless you. You can sing, God bless you. Don't despise others that cannot do those little things. They are very simple things, but don't look at them. See, there is nobody that the Bible says that God resists like the proud. Somebody that is filled with pride. When you are filled with pride, even when you manifest all the gifts, is a dangerous way to be destroyed. The devil will keep, in short, the devil is not worried if he can manifest all the gifts and you are filled with pride. He's not worried because he knows it's, a major, it's just a matter of time. You know that it was difficult for those that sought to kill Jesus to kill him. Do you know why? They couldn't really differentiate Jesus from the disciples. He took a betrayer within him from his camp to know him. It was only the core Pharisees that sees him in the synagogue when he comes to preach that knows him. But when it comes to the general public, they know Jesus as one of his disciples. They couldn't really differentiate. It, Jesus had to kiss. He told them, whosoever I kiss among them is, if they know him, they don't need a bit. They don't need, what was the job that Judas did? He just showed Jesus to them. So he was easily identifiable. Praise God. The principle of one another. You don't set it. Christ is the standard. None of us is the standard. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. First Peter 4, 10 to 11. First Peter 4, 10 to 11. Okay, I think I'm there. And every man that has received the gift, even so minister the same, one to another, as good stewards of the manifest of grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that the God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, whom praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That if any man has a gift, 
He let him use it to minister to one another. We use our gift to minister in the body of Christ, that Christ will receive all glory. He said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Praise God. The principle of one another in the kingdom of God is so important. You know, when we got the first message, when Pastor preached the first message on this love, and I got back home, I remember that there was somebody that was very close to me when I was still working in Nigeria. She was a very good friend, very good friend, and she was always going the extra mile for me. I remember that she was in, working in Bagada. Her branch was in Bagada. My own branch was in Mushi. And she would drive from Bagada to come to Mushi, where she closed from work, to pick me. She's going to Ikoto. I'm going to Jakonde. If you know that route, you know that when you get to Ikoto, you have just started the journey. When you get to Jakonde, you have just started the journey to Ikoto because the traffic between Jakonde and Ikoto is not born again at all. And she could have taken another route of taking Osho, the true Yanopaja, just to come to Egbeda or Ikeja and come to, instead of, but she would drive down from Bagada. She has a driver. And pick me in Mushi. And even when I'm not done with my work, she will wait for me. And she will drive me to my house, drop me, and there face the traffic. Sometimes when she drops me, after two hours, she's still not home, and I will call her. And people, when she, remember she comes to my brand, people will say, oh, your girlfriend is here. She's downstairs. She will pick you. But then I was married. But just before I came to Finland, we had a little disagreement. And it was one of those things that God was warning me about when I was down last year. And I was very, very critical of what she did. And I judged her by my own standard of integrity. And I felt like she failed it. So I cut off. I didn't really feel the pain of, because I have left Nigeria and we were not talking. And when we finished that message, and I, had, I listened to the message over again, I said, wow. I have lost a true friend. So I picked up my phone. I sent her a text. I said, I know that I have not handled this relationship very well. I re could record. The Holy Spirit brought to my mind everything she did, even when my wife put to bed, even when she was the only person I could call when I don't have money, and she would transfer money to my account immediately. If, I, if she has 5000 in her account, I say, I need this money. She would transfer it. And I, because I was setting a standard, and I was very, very critical of her fault, I severed that relationship. And she replied, she said, ah, I'm forgiving you. He said, but the time I needed you most was the time you were not there. I was, I almost wept. You know, she was, she had married, she had problem with her first marriage. And so she was not married for a long time. And the time she was always consulting, we were always discussing praying. And the time she needed me most was the time I cut off from her. And she, she said she can never forget that period because she trusted me so much that there was nothing that she felt that she could have done to me that I could not have forgiven. But I did not think about it. And the Holy Spirit was warning me. Was, it was because you are always critical of other people's fault. And you are always setting unnecessary standard, thinking if people cannot meet your own standard, they are less of a believer. It does not work that way. Christ is the standard. In this kingdom, none of us is. No matter how perfect we think we are, we are not even near the standard. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy what rats before him. Praise God. Number three, in this army, we are not in competition. We are only to complement each other. So we don't work as if we are in competition. Somebody is in the ushering unit, you are to complement the usher. You are in the choir, you are to complement the ministers. You are in the children's department. You have to compliment. We are working together just that the name of Christ will be glorified. We are not in competition. So don't think somebody wants to outdo you or outshine you. Don't ever think about it in that way. Nobody wants to outshine you. Nobody wants to outdo you. We are not here to outdo anybody. That is the purpose of the kingdom. Jesus said, when you treat one another like this, people will see the love that exists between you as believers. And they will know that you are my disciples. But when they cannot see the love that exists between you as believers, how can you show them the love of Christ? Praise God. When you cannot go the extra mile, you still feel like your brother is competing with you. Your sister is competing with you in the church. No, now. We are not here for competition. We are here to complement one another. That is why we are here. First Corinthians chapter 12. We may not read that because of our time, but you can write it at First Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 12 and verse 17, verse 9, and verse 21 to 22. You can read what Apostle Paul was writing there. We are not 1 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 4 to 12. Chapter 12, sorry, from verse 4 to 12 and verse 17. 
and also verse 21 to 22. You can check it later when you get them, but let me rush because of my time. Number four, in this army that we are enlisted to, based on the principle of one another, we are expected to encourage and provoke one another unto good works in love. That is what the Bible commands. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 24 to 25, we are expected to encourage and provoke one another unto good works, not unto bad works. When I, you know when I first got to... Uh, when I first got to Finland and I first got to church, I remember that myself and Brad Joshua, anytime he calls me like this, I'm always looking for my Bible because he's always asking questions and we're always discussing scripture. We will discuss, when, we, when he calls, we will talk scriptures and talk scripture he, himself and uh, Brownie. We will talk, if Brownie calls me too, then I know it was just scriptures and scriptures and scriptures. And we'll, that is what is expected of us as believers. We provoke one another unto good works. Not unto, there are things that Apostle Paul said, let this not be named among you. When we call ourselves believers, let it not be said amongst us that there is somebody that backbites. There is somebody that envies another person. There is someone that is filled with bitterness. You know, bitterness is the highest level of anger. When you hate somebody to the level that you feel like something bad should happen to that person, you know that you have left the realm of anger. You have entered the realm of bitterness. And bitterness is dangerous. You just could, could let, let, let him just fall down. You just wish that something good would not happen to him. Let this not be named amongst you. Praise God. We are to encourage. If, let me, let's read that Hebrew chapter 10. Sorry. Please, what time am I supposed to finish? Because I'm not even sure. Let me check. Okay. 35. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10. From verse 4, 24 to 25. Okay, let me read. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exalting one another as so much more as ye see the day approaching. As you see the day of the Lord approaching, exalting one another, discussing scriptures with one another, encouraging one another in love, provoking one another unto good works. When I see you, you want to ask me, what are you doing for God? How is your life? Praise God. When I ask about your life, I'm not asking so that I can mock you. I'm seeing how can I compliment? Where can I help? Praise God. That is why we are together. That is why we are family. Nobody should be scared of discussing his or our problem with a sister or a brother in church. We are to provoke and encourage one another unto good works. The works that are profitable to glorify the name of God. That is the purpose of the church. That is why we are called a see The building, the organized setting is not the church. When, when the Bible talks about fellowship, it talks about us coming together, manifesting different gifts that God has given to us, and nursing it together and using that to build the kingdom of God. Praise God. You see, there is a particular minister of God that is on social media talking down, Man of God, I can understand when I see probably younger believer doing it, or when I see an unbeliever do it, I can understand, but I cannot understand when a man that has the largest congregation in a particular continent is doing that to other ministers. I don't know if God is the one that spoke to him directly. I, it's hard for me to. And every day he's coming up with a video to analyze the, mini, uh, the administration of Adam. Fine, they may have made mistakes. Nobody is saying that they are perfect. But even you at that level, I believe you have a greater access to them than why will you go? It's because people feel that in this work where God has called us, we are into competition. So they measure success by the number of population you have in your church. And once you see somebody that has a higher number than you, you feel threatened. No, we are to provoke one another unto good works. Praise God. Our victory lies in our unity, not in our division. That is where our unity lies. Apostle Paul was not one of the 12 disciples. But when Peter was teaching errors, when he fell into error, Paul corrected him. Peter never got angry. 
because they knew that they had to walk together. Peter could have said, who is Paul? Of course, he could have said that. Peter was with Jesus for the whole of his three and a half years ministry. He was with Jesus. He was there on the month of transfiguration. Peter was the one that walked upon the water when Jesus called him for. Peter saw everything about Christ that what Paul had was a revelation. Peter had a first class experience. But when Peter fell into error, Paul corrected him and Peter never got. There was no place that you, rec- you will see in the Bible that you say, and Peter was angry because Paul corrected him. And Paul corrected him. Praise God. Paul corrected him. But Peter never got angry. Because they know that this, you, the victory that God has given to them, that Christ has delivered unto them, is in their unity. That was why everywhere Paul was writing, he would write unto one another. Do this to one another because even though he was not with Christ, he knew that everything that Christ told his disciples, he said, do unto one another. Do. That is where our victory rise. In our unity, see, we can take this nation for God if the old believers in this nation will rise up together and we will not say we are what are the denominations that we have in this uh, I don't know eh? Lutheran Lutheran, you, you, you hear all kind of, denomination is not part of God's agenda what the Bible says is where two or three are gathered I invited somebody I was working with somebody and when the first time I saw him and he said he is a believer I said oh, well church do you I can say I, his church is not in Finland. That's okay. Come and fellowship in my church. He said, I don't go to church where there is no Holy Spirit. <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh or I should cry. I think I've shared it with him. That's why he's laughing. <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh or I should cry because I couldn't understand where that was coming from. This is somebody that said he's a born again Christian. I said, for crying out loud. You should be able to fellowship anywhere you see believers. As long as the Holy Spirit in you confirms to you that these are believers, that is church. You can connect. That is where the victory that God has given us lies. It lies in our unity that we can provoke and come together in one. The division in the body of Christ is an advantage to the enemy. It's not an advantage to us. The division in the local setting is an advantage. There's there's an adage in uh, in my language that says, if there's a crack in the wall, the lizard can come in. But when we are connected together, our spirit is connected. You know, it is easy for God to speak to any one of us. But now everybody has to depend on the pastor because, to be sincere with us, how many of us think about the church during the week? I'm not even going to say think about a brother. Just think about the church as a whole. We think about ourselves, but in this kingdom, do you know we are not called to mind our business? That place that we read, the book of uh, First Corinthians, you are not called to mind Philippians. Sorry, Philippians chapter two that we read. We are not called to mind our business. We are called to mind the business of everyone. So if Brabba Diamond cannot eat at home, it should be my business. Praise God. That is what we are called to. We are not called to mind our own business. The scripture says concerning the early Christians that they gathered all everything that they had together. They shared it. So when they pay you on the 20-something, you bring your salary. Pastor, break it. So everybody bring their own salary. They will now divide it equally. That was why in their setting, there was nobody that was richer than all. When Apostle Paul was talking about him being rich, he was talking about the fact that every city he went to, he has a house there. He did not have physical money, but he has a place to call his home. He could enter every city he went there. The believers there welcomed him. They had everything in common. That was why they couldn't understand why Ananias and Sapphira could lie. Because everyone had everything in common. Nobody was keeping secrets. There was no secret or foreign account. They had everything in common. Praise God. I hope God will talk to somebody out in Jesus' name. We don't mind our business in this kingdom. We watch out for each other's back. If you see there's something or God has revealed to you that somebody's life is not going the way it's supposed to go, you should be able to take up that person's issue in the place of prayer. But even you that you have not prayed for yourself, how can you now pray for somebody? Praise God. The kingdom that we are finding ourselves is a very serious business. The devil is doing everything to pull down this kingdom through division. 
starting from the local setting. And it is very easy. All he needs to do is to drop envy in the heart of somebody. Is to drop bitterness in the heart of somebody. Is to drop finding faults. You know, there are people that have the ministry of fault finding. They are like Gogu. They can search it out. They are into the ministry. If you have that kind of ministry, please. I used to have, oh, please. I don't lie. You see, until when God revealed it to me, I never knew it was a mistake. If I watch a minister preach, I've already know where he made mistake. Ah, error. He has run into error. Praise God. And I've, I will list all the errors. And I'll begin to analyze it based on scripture. You know, and you know one thing about Bible. Everything you want to defend, you will find a scripture to defend it. Praise God. And you will never get blessed. If you are into the ministry of finding fault, you can never be blessed. Do your part in the kingdom. When God reveals the mistakes or the fault of a fellow believer to you, go on your knees and pray for that person. If you, if you think you can approach the person, call the person, speak to the person in love. We need to watch each other's back if we really want to possess what God has given to us. Our victory is not in our division. It's in our unity. That I can come to Brabiodo and say, God has given me a word for you. And I can speak that word and he can believe it. That is where our unity lies. But when everyone is minding their own business, the devil is happy. The reason we struggle, let me round up. The reason we struggle in church is because when we come, we come as individuals. We don't come as part of the body of Christ. Everybody come thinking about themselves. We don't come, you know, Christ is the head of the church. We are the body. There's a place in the scripture that we're supposed to read that we did not. He said, the eyes cannot think is more important than the hand. Neither can the leg think that is more important than the nose. Every part has a function. That is the way God has created. Even if you think you don't know anything to do, the fact that you are sitting down is a function. We need you to be here. Praise God. So you don't, nobody has the right to look down on anybody. And nobody has the right to think that somebody is looking. See, I don't know. Let me, I, I've said I want to round up. Let me round up. Don't assume people's intention. I think Brabanji was the one that said it, that you can actually not see intention. So don't assume. Don't assume you think that this person is thinking this thing. Don't assume. It is not part of the kingdom. Anything you want to do, look at how did Christ teach his disciples to do it. It showed them to love one another, to live under the principle of watching each other's back. Praise God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let us bow our head. Let us bow our head and just pray. And talk to God and say, Holy Spirit, I repent of everywhere I've been too critical of my brother or my sister.